next video on solving for the Bayesian Nash equilibrium in a double matrix game. Let's get started by just adding my kernel here. All right, I'm going to explain basically the uh, method that's covered by William Spaniel in, the, Spaniel in the video that's linked here. And let me just show you the example that he uses. So we're thinking about a, a, a a game in which um, player two may be of two different types, type zero or type one, whereas player one only has a single type. So if player two is type zero, then this is the game that the players pay, play, and if player two is type one, and this is the game. So essentially the way that it's set up, player one has the same payoff matrices regardless of player two's type, whereas player two can have two different um, payoff matrices. One is the prisoner's dilemma and one comes from the stag hunt game. And um, yeah, so the way that it's set up here, um, as you can see, player two will observe her type and then make a decision, whereas player one does not observe that type and has to make a decision taking into account the uncertainty um, regarding um, the opponent's uh, type. All right, so what is it that Spaniel suggests? He suggests writing this game on wide form. So essentially thinking about player two's choice as uh, a, a occurring at the ex ante stage. That is, player two decides on a strategy which is a plan of actions in every contingency she may find herself in, and that those contingencies can be that she can be of type zero or type one. So she can either choose left, 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 right, right, left, or right, right. So she has a choice for each type. So she, her, her entire um, action set is there for um, the full range of all combinations of types, which is what is an A2, whereas player one only has these two actions. Okay, so let us see what the idea that uh, this method has is oh, we need to um, create the function first. Let's see what it outputs before. Um, so it, it's outputting us a matrix which is in um, what I call wide form. That is, down we have the actions of player one and across we have the full set of all actions, um, or rather all the strategies that um, the player uh, two can choose from. And what are we computing inside these uh, cells of the matrix? Um, those are the expected payoffs conditional on sticking to this these sets of strategies. So this is player one is saying I'm going to play up uh, and that's regardless of player two's type of course because she doesn't player one doesn't observe player two's type. And player two is going to say, I'm going to play left if I'm type one and left also if I'm type two, type zero and type one. Um, and so because both of the players get the same payoff, if up left is played, this number is uh, three uh, and three. On the other hand, if, um, if for instance, we look in the down left left cell, here, um, we are always going to be in the down column of the two matrices, but player two is uh, saying that she'll play left if we're in type zero and also left if we're down here in type one. And so type uh, zero, that occurs with probability 20%. So with probability 20%, we are in this cell and with probability 80%, we're in this cell. So she gets 20% of this payoff and 80% of this payoff by choosing that strategy. And that's what it says here. Whereas if if we instead go to, uh, let's go to this cell here. So player one is playing down and player two is playing left, right. So if we're in this matrix up here, which is with percent 20% uh, probability, we're, we end up in this cell two comma one. And if uh, we're in, uh, type one, the type one matrix, um, then player two is playing right. 
that's what this means, left, right. So we will end up in the down right cell. So this time we're taking 20% of this payoff and 80% of this payoff. And so that what that means is um, if we take player one, for instance, or we can actually write up the payoffs as a raise. So we have the payoff in, in one of the matrices, matrices in, that's the type zero matrix. And let's make it a numpy array because then we can start to multiply things with it. And in, we're in the type one matrix, the payoffs were one comma one, all right. Then what does uh, the white matrix, what are the inputs in the white matrix? Well, it's P times P zero. And I should say that uh, P is 0 0.2, the probability that we're in that matrix, plus one minus P times P uh, if we're in the type one matrix. And what that returns is it's 20% of two plus 80% of one, that's 1 1.2. And then it's uh, for for uh, for player two, those are the same numbers, so it's going to give the same thing. And similarly, we could say, well, what if we're here, player one plays up, or rather, we should go down here. This cell here, player one is playing up, and player two is playing right left. So we are in the right cell up here. That's zero comma four. And in the lower matrix, we're in the left one, which is three comma three. What do we get there? 2.4 and 3.2. And that's exactly what it says down here. So we're taking P times the first number plus one minus P times the other number. We're basically, what we're doing is we're integrating out player two's type. We are taking the expectation with respect to the random variable that is player two's type. And the way that we do that is that we take the probability of um, type zero times the value if we are type zero plus the probability of type one times the value if it is type one that occurs. That's how we take an expectation with respect to a, a random variable. All right. But so now we have our um, payoff matrix in this white form we can then start to look for the Nash equilibria of this bi matrix game, because now we just have a, a completely standard setup where one player has two actions and the other player has four actions, and then we have our payoff matrix. So we could look for Nash equilibria here. And so the first thing we can do is we can start by eliminating strictly dominated strategies if there are any. As you can see, I've run it before. So. What the, my algorithm here is telling me is that for player two, left left is dominated by um, right left and left right is dominated by right right. And that actually makes a lot of sense because what it is is, as you can see here, uh, it's the choice, the first choice and the second choice is the same. So what it's, this is actually because for player two, if she is the prisoner's dilemma type, then choosing left is strictly dominated by right. So four is greater than three and two is greater than one. So left is strictly dominated by right. So when we look at the left left and left right strategies, uh, or sorry, rather the left left and the right left strategies, these are holding fixed what occurs in uh, this second matrix of player two is type one and only changing the decision of player two in the first matrix. And because, so that what that means is that we're, comp we're only changing uh, whether we're in the left column or the right column here. And one of them is strictly higher regardless of what player one chooses. So that's why left left is uh, dominated by right left for, uh, for player two. So let's just see that 3.0 is smaller than 3.2 and 0 0.2 is smaller than 0 0.4. So that's indeed correct. Right, left strictly dominates left, left. So after removing these actions, what we're left with is right, left and right, right as the only strategy options for player two. So that is, we, we can what we can see here is that if we were to think about the type information which is not present in this wide format of the matrix game, we could see that 
player two is behaving in the same way in the first choice uh, the first matrix if she's type zero regardless of uh, the uh, of what uh, yeah of everything that's a dominant uh, option all right so then we can uh, so this is just a standard matrix game so we can pass it to NashPy to solve for the game and uh, what we get out of that is that it finds three equilibria uh, and what we can see here is that the first two equilibria are actually almost identical um, so those equilibria are that uh, the first player is choosing to put 100% probability on, on her first action and 0% probability on the second action oh sorry no they're not the same they're different they look the same 100% on the first action and then the second equilibrium she's putting 100% probability on the second action similarly here player 2 is, is putting 100% probability on the, her first action and uh, down here 100% on the second action so what is that saying is that this is an equilibrium up here and this is an equilibrium so those actions correspond to up right left and down right right uh, and we can just verify this if we hold uh, up fixed then we can see that the the best option for player two is right left and if we hope the uh, player one's action fixed at down we can see that she'd prefer right right and similarly if we hold right left fixed player one would also prefer up and if we hold right right fixed player one would prefer down so those are indeed two pure strategy Nash equilibria but as you can see Nash Pi is also finding a uh, an additional equilibrium uh, which is a mixed strategy equilibrium where player one is mixing with 50 50 percent probability and player two is mixing um, with these probabilities and just to give you a, a tiny warning it actually turns out that if if you just pass the full game without reducing the game so here we're passing the reduced game um, to where we've eliminated strictly dominated strategies when we pass the full game to NashPy we get this uh, warning and it's actually not it's finding the first two equilibria all right the pure strategy ones but it's actually not finding the mixed strategy equilibrium and it's giving us a warning saying that it's found an even number of equilibria uh, this indicates that a game is degenerate so most pi matrix games are going to have an odd number of equilibria and that's what is causing this um, uh, this warning to come out uh, consider using another algorithm to investigate so that's just a warning if you see that here's actually an example where we can see that it did indeed not find the third equilibrium here uh, for whatever reason all right, that's all for now on this method for uh, finding uh, equilibria in Bayesian games with bimatrix payoffs. And I should note that this particular method only works, or this algorithm that I've written up here only works if um, uh, here it's player two that has two types and player one has uh, only a single type. There are plenty of games for which this will not work. And before uh, stopping, let me just show you what's going on in the belly of the beast. It's this compute full matrix, which takes a list of payoff matrices for player one and a list of payoff matrices for player two. And it's assuming that P, that's the probability that player two is the first type, the first, uh, and then in the instance that she is the first type, both players will receive the payoff matrix corresponding to the first element of their lists. So the use should be lists of payoff matrices. I have actually ones in memory now, so this is for player one. And as you can see, the first element is is uh, is equal to um, oh, oops the second element. And what you can see, it's pre-allocating the output. It's giving us number of actions for player one, and across we have. Um, uh, number of actions squared all right so what it's doing is it's looping over all the actions that player one might take then looping over all the actions player two can take if she's the first type and all the actions that she can take if the she's the second type and then it uh, this i call is keeping track of the column that we're writing to 
and this is the row uh, the row that we are writing to and so we're taking p times the first payoff matrix that's if if the if it's the first type plus 1 minus p times the second payoff matrix and you can see that we're in uh, we're reading in the in the rows we're reading the action from player 1 cuz she's the row player and for the columns we're reading the actions for uh, the column player which is player 2 and these are the this is the action that she will take if it's the first payoff matrix and this is the action that she'll take if it's the second payoff matrix because she observes her type before making her choice so as you can see these t1 and t2 those are the uh, the the matrices um where we have integrated out the type um so it's x ante before uh, the type is revealed um what is the expected value of the payoff with respect to the type of player two and as you can see in, in regardless of what player two is uh, player one is making the same choice choice in each of these all right i hope you enjoyed this